women's rights activist and lawyer, Shola Moss Shogbamibu, and the Republican strategist, Peter Lumage. A very warm welcome to both of you to the programme. And I suppose, Peter, we ought to start with you as a Republican strategist to try and walk us through a little bit about how we got here. Because on the surface, these two were perfect for each other. It was a match made in heaven. The Trump uh, presidency, you could argue, started through Twitter. But now they're at loggerheads. What's gone wrong? Look, I think that uh, Twitter actually fueled the uh, debate between uh, the platform and the president. What the president said is that when you had uh, riots uh, uh, all night long, when you had the police department, which was attacked by these uh, protesters, when you had the police department, one of the precincts had to abandon the headquarters because it was set on fire and there were threats that they would kill the police officers. When you had gunfire raging in various cities and seven people were wounded, the president uh, made it clear that, look, if need be, we have to send in the National Guard, the military. He was telling the, uh, the governor that uh, I'm willing to do anything and everything to assume control of the situation. He made it clear that we're not going to allow these thugs to dishonor the death of Mr. Floyd. It was unfortunate. It was tragic. Uh, the, the video is clear. Uh, the president wants to take control of the situation. He's not promoting violence. He's calling for an end to violence. OK, well, let's bring in Shola Moss Shogbamimu at this point. Do you think that's fair that Twitter was uh, coming in out of hand? They were editorialising over a tweet because perhaps their noses were out of joint over his recent executive order? Twitter was absolutely spot on to censor that tweet. Now, let's, let's be very clear what he said. He said, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Think about that. When the looting starts, the shooting will start. Donald Trump's tweet was egregious and unacceptable, absolutely reprehensible, knowing fully well he's giving license to the military, to the National Guard, to shoot black people indiscriminately, because that's exactly what's going to happen. And besides, Trump's hypocrisy is staggering. In January, he tweeted to Iran not to shoot its protesters, saying the U.S. is looking. In April, he tweeted to, 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 you know, the protesters in Minnesota, saying you should liberate the state. Now, and we all saw, live everyone globally saw, that these were predominantly white people who were standing in the face of police officers, quite frankly, threatening their lives. If a black person had done that, that black person would have been shot. Where was his, I can't stand back and watch this? Donald Trump is being a racist. That is what he's doing right here. He's enabling it. Twitter was absolutely right to do this. Judge Floyd's death was not just inhumane. It was murder. Murder that has not just happened today, but happens a lot of the time to black people. How many more Judge Floyds, Ahmed Arbery, Breonna Taylors must there be for white people to progress? And for people to say that, okay. you know, but by acting this way, you're being thugs. Remember that the word th a thug is a negative stereotype used against black people as well. How many more of this kind of racist attacks must black people take for there to be change? OK, well, let's bring in Peter Lumage at this point. So Shola there saying Twitter was absolutely right, but the president himself today saying that the, that the platform, the media platform, is targeting uh, the conservative uh, dialogue on social media in particular and that he is being picked on whilst they're standing by and saying nothing about the actions of China, for example. Well, um, again, I mean, with all due respect to my um, uh, counterpart, uh, understand one thing, that uh, what's happening right now in the United States with the riots, it is not peaceful protesting, it is not civil disobedience. Those are constitutional rights that we have here, and we should exercise them properly. But uh, when you accuse the president of the United States of being a racist, the first thing that the president did in this case, he authorized the FBI and the Department of Justice to investigate... The FBI was already doing that. Well, let me finish, because I didn't interrupt you, but uh, he authorized both the Department of Justice and the FBI to investigate the civil rights if they were violated, uh, Mr. Wright's, uh, Mr. Floyd's. But on the other hand, you have a governor who is a Democrat in this state. You have the attorney general who is a Democrat in this state. You have the mayor who is, who, you have the mayor who is a Democrat. You have the city council who are all Democrats. And they were acting very, very slowly. And therefore, the president had to react to take control of the situation when he called to the National Guard to get involved if need be, he authorized the governor 
to use the National Guard to take control of the situation. Protesting and civil disobedience does not involve looting, does not involve rioting, does not involve destroying properties, does not in uh, involve shooting each other, does not involve killing other people. They have the right to do so. No one is denying the fact that the video that we have seen all over the world with a police officer doing what he did to Mr. Floyd may account to murder, but you and I as attorneys, we know that murder has certain elements and go they're going to have to be satisfied. And therefore, the president wants to make sure that the investigation is impartial, regardless of the race of the police officer or the victim over here. And he's taking control of the situation and using all means necessary to make sure that the citizens of the okay. state of uh, Minnesota and Minneapolis are safe and the businesses will function without fear. I would like well, listen, I can see Shola shaking her head. Go on, Shola. I would like to respond to that. I think Martin Luther King said it best when he said, Riots are the lang is the language of the unheard. So I suppose we should be asking you, what is it that you're not listening to? What is it that the you know America, white America, is not listening to? Because when you when you take the time right now to try to categorize what black people can do, it tells me that you're only not speaking to the heart of the matter. White people have expressed and are expressing racial violence against black people. These white people are the violence against black people. Then you have the audacity to pass judgment on black people when they respond to said racial violence. How dare you? You don't get to tell black people who have had centuries, not one year, not two years, not a decade, oh, centuries of inhumane dehumanization please. against them. That okay, is let wrong. Peter Lumage well, respond. Oh, no, 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 I let him speak. I, sh I should be able to respond. So my point is this. When will white people, when will white people progress? Donald Trump is politicizing this. Okay, let Shola finish her point and then we'll bring you in, Peter. Donald Trump is politicizing this and that's wrong. Nobody asked him to come take control when the FBI had already begun the investigation before he tweeted about it. The bottom line is this. You also saying that it may be murder. Everybody sees that it's murder. And for the longest time, institutional racism covers up okay. the death and dehumanization of black people. But the only difference now in the 20th century is, thank God for mobile phones, it's been filmed. So, no, I absolutely reject what okay. you just said. Well, let Peter respond to that point. <laughs> First of all, when you define murder, murder as an attorney, you should know that there are certain elements that you have to satisfy again, so you, you well, should I'm check well with about your law school. Right. But on the other hand, when the president, when the president uh, tweeted and he said that we have to bring the situation under control, he didn't separate the blacks and the, the, the whites and the Hispanics and the state of Minnesota or anywhere else. All the protesters over there are mixed. You don't have a group of blacks or Hispanics or whites protesting. They are from different ethnic backgrounds and religious backgrounds and political persuasions. What the president is saying, that if the governor, who is a Democrat, the attorney general, who is a Democrat, the city council, who are all Democrats, if, if the Democrat that state cannot run its affairs and bring this situation under control, he will do anything necessary to protect okay. the citizens, regardless of their race. So you should okay. be ashamed of yourself for Listen. using those racist statements when you refer to our you president. All, can I just interject? Ashamed. Because all of this is... is abs Sorry to interrupt, and I just want to, to move the debate on because this is really important, but also an extra strand to all of this, of course, is what will happen next, certainly in terms of this spat between the president and president... Uh, and Twitter, because, of course, President Trump himself said that I think that maybe I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Twitter. He's issued this executive order. We understand from our sources, at least, that it could well be challenged in the courts and may not be successful. But what will the president do? He stands to lose a lot, doesn't he, if he tries to shut down Twitter, given it's an election year in the United States. And this to you, Shola Moss Shogwamimu. Now, I don't believe um, Trump can go any lower because he's already at the bottom of the pits. We, we, nobody was surprised when he decided within hours of um, Twitter uh, putting those facts, did the fact check listing on his tweet that he was going to do an executive order. Everyone expects him to act like the petulant, petty, fragile man baby that he is. So if he had any sense or people to advise him, he would know that his actions are actually speaking against what should be proper order, what should be constitutional, and what is in the best interest of the nation. Twitter is absolutely right. I mean, how many more racist, inflammatory, divisive tweets 
should we be getting from the president of the United States before somebody says, this is wrong, this has okay. to stop? Because all he's doing is engaging in divisiveness. That is wrong. And so bottom line is this. Donald Trump, especially in an election year, is using this opportunity to try to place himself right front and center, not focusing on his mismanagement of the coronavirus pandemic, not focusing on the fact that it's a real human being, Judge Floyd, that was murdered on the streets of Minnesota, polit politicizing this, as you can hear from my counterpart, talking about a Democratic governor, a Democratic mayor. What's that got to do with anything? A human being died, and that human being was just not anybody. He was given the same treatment that people with the color of my skin have been given for centuries. That is what is at the heart of the matter here. And nobody's addressing that. That's what needs to be addressed.